Hi, I'm Lou Caruso from Surfcasters Journal and today I'm going to show you how to take apart your boga. This is a boga 30. How to take it apart, clean it, and actually highlight the numbers in here so that you can see them at night. I can't see anything when it, once it gets dark. I'm blind as a bat. So this worked really well for me that I could put some paint on the numbers, hold my light up quick, and get a good accurate read. All right, so first thing you want to do, you want to make sure when you got your boga that you have the tool that comes with it. Now I'm sure 90% of you are going, oh crap, where is it? If you don't have it, you can go to Home Depot and buy a similar size piece of rod and cut it down and use that. I just polish the end. I always keep a couple of extras. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is you want to take this boga and you'll see there's pins in here and that's what the tool is for. You want to take these pins out and we'll do them one at a time. So first I'm going to take the tool, a couple of taps with a hammer and we'll see if we can start drifting this pin out. Now if the pins don't come out, if you haven't done your boga in 10 years, 12 years and you can see rust in here what you might have to do is the day before you decide to do this is get some penetrating oil. I happen to use this. It's called Croil. It's phenomenal. I've used this on outboard engines when I couldn't get nuts off with heat. I've actually soaked them with this. I use them on my car chassis when I have to change shocks. It's pretty phenomenal stuff. But you can use anything. Liquid wrench. Um, there's a million of them out there. But if you can find the Croil, um, I've seen it in Home Depot. I'd strongly recommend this above anything else. So the first thing we're going to do, again we're going to take this top closest to the back and we're going to knock that pin out. Okay, and you can see the pin is coming out. So what that does, it releases the back rubber piece and it also releases the handle from the bulga. As you can see, once you do that, it frees up your entire scale. So keep that in mind that if your bulga is clean and you just want to paint your numbers, you can just take this one pin out if you're afraid to get too involved in here. So then there's a washer up top that comes off. Now the next step is we're going to take the second pin out. Again, when you do this, keep track of your pins. Keep them, lay them, If you want to lay them out in order, it'll help you later on putting it back together because they're different sizes. Again, knock the pin out. There's your second pin. You can see that's shorter than the first. Pop that out. And then third, we're going to pop this last pin on the grip itself. Now you'll notice on these pins, there's a little ball here. These little balls are what's used to actually lock the pins in place. So what you want to do is give them all, if they're pretty clean, you'll want to give them a little spray of WD-40 and just put them on the side. You can see the pin right there. Now I'll just take all three of them, give them a little spray, give them a couple of seconds to soak while I'm cleaning up the rest of the boga. Now what I do is slide this handle up now I'll warn you ahead of time, because this if there's anything that's going to be a downfall on this boga, it's going to be this process right here. When you slide this up, add it away, that gives you access here. You'll see there's two springs, one on each side. Inside those springs, there's little black plastic caps. I've already had one go shooting across the room the first time I did this. It wasn't pretty. All right, so you're going to open up your lip there. 
light this up, open it up. There's a little black cap in here. What you're doing is as you're pulling this up easily and keep opening it, you're actually sliding that black cap up. Get it up enough. You can also put your tool in there and work it out. When you do that, you'll see when you get it up, there's a fourth pin, a short pin that holds the, the grip itself together. You take that fourth short pin out. Now, you can take your boga and open it up and take your pieces out. You can see this, this one is a little tiny bit of rust, but overall it's in pretty good shape. I usually do mine at the end of every season. Saves me a lot of aggravation. Uh, especially you guys this year that were on that sand deal bite. Um, you're liable to find that you're all packed with sand in here and it might be a little bit tough. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this out now, before I get it out, here's the springs I talked about. You want to grab those springs so that they don't shoot out on you. Okay, slide this out. Slide this down. And your boger is basically taken apart. Now, what will happen is you release, tilt down, and here's your spring. So what you have here is your boga is totally disassembled. That's the extent of all the moving parts. Not rocket scientists. After you do it once, it's not really that scary. First time I gotta admit, I was a little nervous uh, when I did it. So now what I'll do is I'll take all the parts, check them for rust. If I have a little rust, I'll take some super fine steel wool. I'll spray it first with WD-40 take a little bit of steel wool and clean it up. These are in relatively good shape, so I'm not even concerned. Clean it up. Make sure everything is clean and well lubricated. A lot of times what happens is you'll find that this is packed with sand and this will impede the ability of the bulger itself to either give you a good accurate weight or to actually work when you're squeezing to get that lip at a grab. As I'm speaking now spring actually is looking to see what happens. The springs pop out like this. Once they do this, they want to go. So what I'll do is I'll actually release them. So you can see that's the little black tip that I'm talking about. These pop off. I hope you have good eyesight. And plenty of help to crawl around looking for it. Alright, so now we've cleaned everything. We got all our pieces all cleaned up. And we'll take the scale part and we'll actually take some alcohol, just rubbing alcohol is fine, and we want to clean this. We don't want any type of contaminants on it at all because we're going to try and get some paint on there. Now this one doesn't have any paint. I don't use, uh, I don't use this one that often, so I haven't um, refreshed the paint on here in a couple of years. Get it nice and clean on the numbers. And let that dry for a minute. Now what I did is I went and I bought a bottle of Cretex fluorescent green. I want something that's going to pick up the light so when I'm out there at night, it's going to reflect back in a hurry. So we'll give that a good shake. You can use a paintbrush, you can use 
um, anything you like. I just use a Q-tip, dab it in there, because what I want to do is I, I want to build this up. I'm going to do it a few times, and I'm going to build it up in layers, and make sure there's plenty in there. Okay, so now I take my Cretex paint. Gonna get plenty on the, uh, plenty on the Q-tip. Right, I'm just gonna take it, and I'm actually gonna just rub it over it. As I do this, it's working its way into those numbers. Now we're going to let that sit a minute. We want it to dry because otherwise what will happen is when you take your paper towel and wipe over the top, you'll wind up pulling it back out. So you just want to wait a minute and let it set up. In the meantime, you can make sure all your other pieces are thoroughly dried can hit them all with a little bit WD-40. Um, one thing that I do find sometimes, I actually have to take this to the kitchen sink and um, wash it out good, good hot soapy water. Uh, make sure that any sand that's down in here is out because what will happen is if you don't, it just defeats the purpose. As soon as you go to slide this back in, it's grinding again. And uh, you put all the effort into this, you don't want to have this piece hanging up on you. All right, so now we've let this dry for a little bit, and what I'm going to do is take a piece of paper towel and lightly go across the top. Go back and forth, ever so lightly, and clean off the excess on the surface. Now you can see what's happening is the paint is starting to get into the, the crevices here. So I'll clean off the surface and then I'll actually do it again and I'll do it three or four times because what's happening now is it's leaving a little layer of paint and it's got that much more something to grasp. So I'll do it a few more times, I'll build it up and we'll do one more for the sake of, uh, the, sake of the video just to give you an idea. So we're going to hit it a second time now. And the same thing, you want to soak it, get it in all those numbers, you probably want to make sure you get it on all the lines so that you can not have to round up to the next five pounds like most of us probably do anyway, only kidding. And the other thing you want to do is a little secret I learned a couple of years ago is you want to take the, the pin that goes into this spot and on one end of the pin you put a little bit of paint and that what that allows you to do is in the middle of the night you ever pull down your boga you got a fish on and you pull it down and the wrong side is facing you you don't have the numbers well if you put a drop of paint on the end of this when you put it back in and keep that paint on the side where your numbers are. Now when you hold your boga, all you have to do is turn it until the paint is facing you and you never have to worry about having a fish up like this and spinning around your scale so that you can see what you're doing. All right, so again, we won't wait quite as long. We'll just clean it off. And you can see, that's only two coats and you can already see the numbers are now outlined. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our spring We've cleaned everything up now. We're going to put our spring back in. Now we're going to take our plastic piece, the infamous springs. Now the black end always goes to the front, or the rounded piece. So we're going to put that back in there. Okay, so that looks like that. We're going to take the other one and do the same thing, very easily, very carefully. I usually hold it like this, and we're going to slide that back in. 
So now we have the black piece in, we have the springs locked in there. We want to, before we do anything else and we put these grippers on, we want to make sure we take the black handle piece and we want to slide that back up in here. We just want to get it up in there so that it's out of the way. So now we're going to take our two hand, uh, two gripper pieces. We're going to slide them in. Now remember, when you do this, it's a little deceiving because you want to put it in this way and it's not. You want to keep them with this little curve on top here after the rivet. That's going to actually face in for you. Okay, so you got both pieces. Slide them in. You're going to line up the two holes in the in the lipper up here, and you're going to use the shortest pin you have. This pin doesn't have any balls on it to hold or to lock it in there. It just drops in. Like so and then you slide the whole thing down and that's what keeps it locked in there. Right, so the next step is we're gonna take this black piece, we're gonna slide it down. Now if you notice on your tool, on one end, it's cut at an angle and that's done for a reason. Once you put the tool in there, and start working it, it's going to push those two springs up for you so that you can go right through. All right, and then the next step is going to be you're going to take your pin and you're going to follow the tool. All right, so just go in right behind it, a few taps, and there you're good. And check it at that point, you probably want to check it and make sure that you did it right, that your bulk is working. Again, you're going to be behind those two springs with those black plastic clips. You're going in behind them with the pin. So now the next step, we're going to take, again, we're going to take the tool and we're going to follow it through. And we're going to take our second pin which is the same width as the, the tube with the scale on it. And again, follow it through. Okay, and that allows you to still come up. And then our last step in the process, take the handle, slide it back on. Now you're going to notice that you have to line up, there's a hole in the spring shaft and then there's a hole in the side. Again you're going to take your cap, put your cap on and follow it through with that tool. Put your tool through. Make sure, give it a little tug to make sure that it's everything is hooked up. And again, put your pin in, a couple of taps. And you're good as new. All right now, take your scale, put a little drop of paint right there where your scale is. Now, when you look at your bulga and you have both ends and you have no idea, it'll be on the side where you put that drop of paint. As you can see, you can just barely see the numbers because I only did it twice, but you can see you already have a little bit of advantage. And at night with the fluorescent paint, it picks it, picks it up pretty good.